Hey friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today we are going to take a early November garden tour. We just had three nights of big freezes here in North Carolina and I want to take this opportunity and kind of show you what the garden looks like after a big freeze. I have intentionally not cleaned up anything since last week's freeze because I really want to show you, I think it's very important that we're open and transparent about what our gardens look like every month, every season out of the year. So that is our intent uh, with this video. So we're going to kind of show you what our garden looks like here in early November after our hard freeze. And then we're also going to talk about some uh, fun projects that we are looking forward to within the garden for next year, because it is never too early to start planning your garden uh, for the next year, because we are already thinking and we have got some major plans that I am super excited about. Of course, here we are standing uh, along, this is the shade garden right along the house and the driveway behind me. You were here with me when we did some fall containers. Uh, I don't know, was it even a month ago? But maybe it was. And you can see, yeah, the, the freeze hit hard here in this garden. This is vastly perennials in this garden. There are a handful of annuals just because my perennials just get so massive. You can see big things that took a hit the hostas right so the hostas are melting away the one that feather falls no excuse me the white feather um, back there in the back it is a little bit more protected because it's closer to the house so it did not get uh, hit nearly as bad as some of the other ones but this is what's going to happen to your hostas they are going to uh, get completely frozen and they're going to die back they're going to turn to mush same thing with your hydrangeas hydrangeas are not evergreen they will get fried all of your foliage right here it just melts it actually just burns it off we are not yet this one did not get hit as hard as some of the other ones again because it's closer to the house it's in a little bit of a nook so it was protected I think we got down to like 25 degrees that night and then the next two nights we were right around 30. So we've had we've had some good freezes. That's what this looks like. I do want to show you, I'm going to back up just a little bit right here because this uh, little container right here was one of those. Now it is not fancy y'all. I keep it very, very simple in the fall. Uh, but my gosh, this ivy is going like crazy and that is a wild berry eucara from Proven Winners. Eucharas, of course, are known also as coral berries, uh, but man, that thing is just rocking out. It has not si showed any signs of burn or the ivy has grown a ton. So as simple as it is, I do enjoy it quite nicely. Coming on down, um, my holly fern will be a evergreen so you I will have structure even in the winter time with that. You can see these golden tiaras are melting. You will also see that the winter weeds are already starting to germinate. So <laughs> I, th I think weeding is basically a 12 month job here in the South. Unless you're covered in snow, you're gonna have summer weeds, you have winter weeds, um, and that is what these are. So as I come in through here and clean up and clean up my hostas, obviously I'm gonna come in here and weed as well. So Sun King, Aurelia Sun King. This thing is a giant, it's actually two because you can actually see that now. A giant beast of a plant. Um, some of y'all have told me that I just need to take down my hay rack because it gets hidden in the summertime. And I say, no, it's my garden and I'm gonna do it. Because yes, does this Aurelia Sun King get massive and huge? It sure does. So what I do is I have fun and give myself some thriller here with some pop of color. So uh, yeah, great. This will get completely cut down, right? I will go ahead and just come in and cut it to the ground and it will disappear for the winter. <laughs> if you do have annuals left in your garden, um, they are probably some toasty critters. You're gonna see that in, in this garden tour today. Some of y'all were fussing at me like, oh, the flowers are so pretty before the, we had that freeze. But now I get to come through and deal with mushy, smushy plants. So this was one of the Rocapuco impatience and it is mush right now plants are so much easier to pull out when they are not completely melted so that is why i begin my fall cleanup even before we have the first freeze one and it did come really fast that's what jerry said like we were 
we didn't even have a frost. We went from record breaking 84 degrees and then two days later it was 25 degrees. Um, so a massive fast hard freeze, no frost, <laughs> no nothing. It just went from warm to cold. What handled it really well was my camellia. This is white by the gate. Now you will notice on my white by the gate I've got tons of buds, loads and loads. This is a japonica, so this will bloom somewhere in January uh, to early, early spring. You'll notice that I do have some brown leaves right here. Well, why do I have brown leaves? Because this was new growth. This was nice, tender growth. It was still growing when that 25 degree night hit, it burned it. So these, these probably top four leaves will go ahead and fall off at some point. It's not gonna kill the plant. The plant is just fine, um, but it will, those that, that new growth did get fried and it will drop off. Your perennial ferns that are not evergreen, again, toasty, you cut them to the ground. As I come through and do things in the garden, I will take you along for the ride. Some of these things I'll just do on my own because there's a lot of cleanup to be done, but I do think there is a great uh, lessons to be learned. My lamian, that is the pink Chablis lamian from Proven Winners. For us, it is a perennial. We sell it as an annual, and I honestly find that it does better performance for me in the cooler months than in the heat of the summer. It's just an interesting little side note on that. The Broalia, gone. Solomon seal. This is what's fun about Solomon seal. Really, and when I say fun, as a gardener, you'll understand. It's so easy to clean up. Very much like a hosta. I don't know if they're there yet. Um, but yeah, so it'll just pull right out. Once you leave it long enough and they get fried enough, the stalks will just pull right out of the ground. You don't even have to cut them. They'll just come. Now, obviously, if there's still a little bit of green on there, but look, see? I'm doing garden cleanup right here. They just pop right off, which makes it really, really nice in the garden. The weeding is, is a chore, as always. Now, right before we had the freeze, I took pictures of the hanging baskets, and um, they were spectacular the end of the season. I could not have been more happy, more pleased with these hanging baskets. Uh, some of, I posted up some pictures when they were in all of their glory right before the freeze hit. People were like, well, bring them inside. Y'all, these things, when they were, the, the basket itself is two feet wide. And then when you had the plants, it was probably four feet wide. So no, uh, I could not bring these inside. And as far as bringing them in the greenhouse, no, these were annuals. We thoroughly enjoyed them. Their season is over and uh, next year we get to start again. That is the beautiful thing about annuals is that you can switch them out. Now, I do love this combination, so I will be doing it again. That is simply some dragon wing begonias and then diamond frost euphorbia. There were quite a few in there because I planted it later in the season. That was actually my second planting. The first planting I did with calibracobas and coleus, it didn't get enough sun. Like it just was on the struggle bus and I said, nope, we're gonna do this. And man, it was an absolute winner for sure. Now, while we're still here at the house, we're gonna turn around and we're gonna go into the cottage garden and up on Hydrangea Hill, uh, the chicken coop, the whole, the whole nine yards. Had to adjust the camera lens there a little bit, got a little bright on us. But some gardeners, and it's not right or wrong, this is what makes the world go round, right? Uh, that is the beautiful thing about you get to garden in your space and I get to garden in mine. Some people really love perennials and they only wanna focus on perennials. Some people really love annuals and wanna focus on that. Vice versa, right? I'm a camp of everything has its place in the garden. Whether you've got, talking about gorgeous Amsonia. Amsonia, this is uh, Blue Star. It is what we consider like a non-branded plant and it is a native. It does beautiful star-like pure blue flowers in early spring. And then you get this great color in the fall. Very bright, very vibrant. Um, it's turning a little bit more brown now after the freeze. Before the freeze, it was just like golden yellow, which is gorgeous. Um, my Baptisia is still hanging in there. My daylilies are starting to take a hit. That kind of thing. The annuals. The <laughs> Speaking of annuals, y'all, look, blessed. So this was the... Uh, 
playing the blues blue suede shoes no blue suede shoes this was blue suede shoes salvia we had four of them across here clearly they are toast these are absolutely toast now if you look down there at the very bottom they actually still have a little bit of green on them we sell these as annuals all of the rockin series of salvias we sell them as annuals if you want to try to keep it as a perennial what you would want to do is let the freeze get it nice and hard and then just cut it to the ground right so don't pull it out just cut it to the ground you can mulch as normal and then depending on the season depending on where you are the conditions and all of that it may come back i had the rock and deep purple come back for several years in a row until it just got too massive and i ended up pulling it out so just know that if you want to try to keep your salvias cut them to the ground leave them alone and we'll see what happens come springtime uh zingas i adored these zingas this year y'all these are six plants that is six plants that completely took over this garden box which i was quite happy about um massive plants i mean these right i mean i'm five foot and look at these things um just gorgeous i love doing the generi uh <laughs> benaries generis woohoo <laughs> Benary's giant mix uh, and so this is that is what this is it had some yellows and purples and fuchsias and oranges that kind of thing clearly they're ready to come out as are the sunflowers these were sunflowers that I had planted um, to be as cut flowers and we can you can tell that we did use some of them as cut flowers because they were gone but it was also really nice to leave a lot of them up here because we could see them from everywhere no matter kind of where you were on the property here at the house and even at the nursery you could see them over here and they were gorgeous now I do have some very fun uh, plans for this space next year because we're going to back up just a smidge over to the next box Jerry um, the past two boxes um, this year were predominantly for vegetables right like you can still see I still have my jalapeno plants here right and these were tomatoes right here um, and I had cucumbers and I had basil and all of that kind of stuff all of which I will still do my basil and I'll still do my flat leaf parsley because I love flat leaf parsley um, but I think I don't think I ate we ate one jalapeno pepper and I don't I think we use the tomatoes maybe just a handful of times just because it's just they, we're just transitioning to a different part of our life where we're not big into vegetables and the maintenance on that uh, we get much more enjoyment out of flowers so for that reason next year I am going to turn these four boxes the middle one will stay herbs uh, the next those next four boxes will turn into a cut flower garden and I have some really fun plans because uh, I am going to fill them first with some I'm gonna try my hands at some ranunculus and some anemones because now I have already decided on doing it as cut flower garden but our sweet Alyssa who Alyssa works for us and she's worked for us for three or four years um, I think maybe she was a freshman in college when she came to work for us and she is getting married at the end of May next year so May of 2024 and she is just a like she is part of our family right and she asked if she could get married here and have the reception here at Creekside and we were honored and we said absolutely and she said now y'all don't go to any extra trouble but you know and I was like Alyssa do you not know me so I am going to be planting uh, cut flowers in her color palette for the wedding fingers are crossed that the timing will go correct because we've never done these before so we have some big plans I will also say this because you're going to go we have a lot of big projects um, that the wedding is going to kind of push us into which I'm quite happy about uh, because some of these projects I've been wanting to do for years but I will just go ahead and say that you're going to go with us on all this journey for the next seven months six and a half months of getting ready for Alyssa and Nick's wedding but 
Creekside is not turning into a wedding venue. Don't ask me. The answer is going to be no. I was joking, but not really joking, and said you must contribute, you know, however many years it is for Alyssa, four years of blood, sweat, tears, uh, tons of hours working here to even be considered to have a wedding here. So this is a very special, unique situation where Alyssa and Nick are going to be married. They're going to be married. The ceremony is going to happen at the nursery. We have a special spot for that. And then the reception will be in the backyard. So lots of plans for that. Beginning first with the cut flowers and the ranunculus and the anemones. I'm going to try zinnias. It's going to be really close. I'll start them inside um, and bring them in. We're going up here um, because of it being the end of May. So we shall see. Stay tuned. You're going to go along for that ride. Now, this area is definitely it's hydrangea hill, right? And we've got little lime hydrangeas. We've got firelight hydrangeas. Hibiscus going down the center. Everybody is brown and toasty. Everybody's starting to drop their leaves. The um, hydrangeas are, like I said, nice and crispy and crunchy, but I leave them especially until we get past the holidays because these make beautiful um, flowers in arrangements, like those fall winter arrangements. And since it blooms on new growth, I have no problem cutting them. So your panicle hydrangeas bloom on new growth. You can see last year I cut it right here and all of this is new growth. So it was cut here and you know, you've got two, two and a half feet of new growth. So that makes, makes it easy that you can cut them and you're not going to damage next year's blooms on them. We are so, so dry. It is incredibly, oh, and I know, I know a lot of the part of the country is dry too. The South, Texas, all through there very very dry so we have had no rain whatsoever so i am up here watering like crazy the the uh, violas and the mustards they're hanging in but just try i can't keep enough water on them because this is such a warm spot but they're hanging in there the girls are doing great they don't care a bit um, all of the perennials that i have planted all of the shrubs they are all doing really really well um, el nino Remember, El Nino is a desert orchid, a small tree. She got fried. This is totally normal. She's going to be deciduous. So she is a small tree. You can see it's a multi-trunk where I'm going to kind of keep it in that form. Not quite losing leaves yet as far as like falling off, but she will completely lose all of her leaves. Not a problem whatsoever. And then, um, yes, the time came. This was the... Um, beautiful hibiscus that our friend Tiffany, she always will seed one for me and then give it to me. It is a foliage plant. It makes great um, fillers for cut flowers and it, it's just gorgeous. It was a beautiful burgundy, but it is an annual. So this was started from seed from Tiffany. Gives, she gives me one every year. I love it. Um, but yeah, it's an annual, kind of like a coleus, right? So it is all said and done. The trees are doing really well. Um, I know we had planted these trees. Uh, when, when did we plant these trees? Watch out, there's a plant behind you. Yeah, it was in the summer because we didn't do the, the chicken coop until mid-June, so it was after that. But the um, paper bark maple, I had to think for a second, the paper bark maple still hanging on to its leaves. The cherry tree, they always lose their leaves early. I mean, that's just even towards the end of summer, they start to lose their leaves. It's just what they do because it's hot and they just kind of check out and they're like, yep, yeah, no, nope, I'm done. Um, so it's doing just fine. And then the uh, elm. So this is the Bosque elm, really fun texture to it. I saw these because, you know, our oldest daughter's in college and we were driving by oh we were in Clemson that's where we were and they had some mature bosque elms in one of the courtyards oh my gosh they were gorgeous so I cannot wait to see this bosque elm as it grows and develops it had done really really well it dropped a lot of its leaves not really dropped I think the Japanese beetles got a hold of it maybe um, but it had completely flushed back out so it is doing phenomenal it did get dry, I think, um, before planting it. And so it had, when we planted it, it didn't have a lot of leaves on it, but it flushed back out as soon as we put it in the ground and was very happy. Forever Goldie, Forever Goldie is a great evergreen from our friends at Southern Living Plant Collection. Hanging in there, doing just fine, right? Everybody's 
just doing really well. And then we have got tons of plants that need to go in the ground. That is on the to-do list. You can see that the spireas, the hydrangeas, right? The freeze got them. They're starting to lose some leaves. Um, but I wanted to give you an update on uh, Little Miss Figgy. So remember when I planted her, she was completely barren. She had some fruit on it, but no leaves. Now, yes, the freeze, the freeze got some of the leaves, but man, clearly loves being in this container flushed out really, really nicely. And um, I mean, for the time of season, right, and the amount of time we had new growth on it. So come springtime, I expect it to be nice and full and bushy and very, very happy for sure. And then the other big plan that we have, which is not new, um, is this area back here. We've talked about this before, where this is going to have Jerry and Jackson are going to come in with like the excavator and the bobcats and stuff and just clean up. We're not taking out trees because we're gonna keep this as a shade garden. But you know, where we have debris sitting right here, that needs to come and be pushed out. We've got, you know, some funky trees that from the construction of the, of the chicken coop, all of that just needs to be cleaned up. But this whole area in here, there's a, there's a natural gully right on the backside that garden will go up to that gully, but you can see it gets really good like morning sun here. And then as the sun sets, especially in the summertime behind me, then this gets all shaded. So this will be that perfect kind of shade part sun garden where I can have things that like more sun but need a break in the afternoon. I can have them more up front and then things that love it shady have them tucked in the back. So I'm really, really, really excited about developing this space right here. Uh, but first we're focusing on the signature garden and that space um, and then we'll, we'll move on over to here. The summer sweets, I always get them backwards. Um, this is vanilla spice. So vanilla spice, there's three of them here and they are starting to take on the yellow. These are the plants that I tell you that look like they're big bird yellow in the fall. Well, they are starting. It is a gorgeous, really bright, bright yellow, and the whole plant will get that. And so these will, these are native plants. They will fill in right here. They are deciduous. So once they turn yellow, then they will go ahead and drop, but they do gorgeous white flowers that smell divine, and the pollinators absolutely love them in the summertime. So vanilla spice right here, is doing quite well. All right, now let's move on over uh, to the forest pansy bed and the back patio and the dahlias. Get an update on the dahlias. Welcome to the forest pansy bed and the pathway to the back patio. This is one of my favorite gardens, um, but it has definitely entered into her fall phase. The forest pansy red bud essentially has lost all of her leaves, right? So she has completely defoliated. It is, they are all underneath her on in that flower bed. And you can see that things have gotten toasty, right? Your hostas again. I just want to people to reassure, be reassured because if you're a new gardener and you, it's very overwhelming when you start to garden and you think, oh my gosh, what has happened? They're dead, they're not gonna come back. No, that's the beautiful thing about these perennials and these shrubs, right? So many of them will be deciduous. They're the perennials, vast majority are going to die completely down to the ground. They just get fried. Um, and then other things will, like your hydrangeas, they're gonna defoliate, but you're gonna have sticks. Come the um, springtime, they're gonna be absolutely gorgeous. You are gonna have those some evergreen perennials. You've got gorgeous hellebores, Lenten roses that are going to be evergreen. You can see them kind of around the base of the forest pansy, certain ferns. So we've got a tassel fern in front of that hellebore. It is going to be an evergreen. Back in the back of the bed, we've got autumn ferns and Florida sunshine, um, elysiums. All of those are going to be evergreens as well. Um, probably I will enlist because if you know this space, I garden a ton in here with my mama, uh, Mimi. So Mimi and I will come in here and tackle it and get it all cleaned up and get it ready to go um, to sleep for the winter. Coming over here on this side, this is definitely the side that gets a lot of sun. Lots of fun fall interest in here. 
Scentlandia. So we've got Sweetlandia, which is an Itea. Uh, does great as far as beautiful fall foliage. And not only do you have gorgeous color on it, but they hold the leaves really, really well. They're not going to drop their leaves um, right away. Like certain shrubs will do that and they'll drop. Another gorgeous shrub in the garden for the fall is oak leaf hydrangea. This is Gatsby Gal. Gatsby Gal is a more petite. Some oak leaf hydrangeas, the old varieties, can get like 20 feet tall. She's in that five ish, five to six, I think, foot range. And she's unique in the fact that she can do full sun. This one gets sun up to sundown sun, and she is beautiful. But look at the foliage. I adore it. Beautiful burgundy. It's still got some green down the center. You've got your old blooms on it. It just makes for a really fun, fun fall interest. With your oak leaf hydrangeas, don't prune them. Just leave them alone. Do not prune. They bloom on old growth. So if you have a hydrangea and the leaves look like an oak leaf, like the oak tree, leave it alone. Don't, don't prune it. And every year she just continues to get bigger and bigger and better and better. So between that and of course the hydrangeas back here, these are panicles again. These are your limelight primes. Nice and brown and crispy, but again, they give us some structure along with perennial grasses. They too have turned brown, but they give us a structure in the garden and that is very, very nice throughout the season. Now, uh, the generous gardener, she is just a very full, full rose. She's a little wild and woolly. I will trim her probably mid-January. I, you, If you wanted to trim her, like if some of the pieces were just getting out of the way and, or in the way rather and just out of control, then you absolutely could prune it. I did that some with some of the pieces so that um, some of the canes so that they didn't attack us as we went by. But what's great too about the rose is the rose hips. And hopefully Jerry can show you some of these rose hips. Um, this might be a good right here. So a rose hip is where there were roses. So earlier in the season, these were all roses. This is the little bud part of the rose that you leave it on there. That bud will kind of swell. And then in the cooler temperatures, it will turn colors. Depending on your rose will de determine the color of your rose hips. So they could be orange, it could be yellow, they could be red, anywhere in between. These make great uh, arrangements in fall cut flowers, right? So I am going to leave them and then when it comes around Thanksgiving and I'm doing some arrangements for Thanksgiving and into Christmas, then I will come in and selectively prune these and add them to some cut flower arrangements along with some hydrangeas and whatever else is looking good in the garden. Pretty much back here, uh, we've got, of course, more roses. These are the David Austins. They too are slowly going into dormancy. You can see that we did have some beautiful flowers right before that freeze. I did come out and cut a vase full of roses. They are still on the kitchen counter and just so, so sweet. Now, back here, these are tea olives, the sweet osmanthus. We've talked about this before, how much I absolutely love and adore this plant. Uh, it is an evergreen and clearly we planted it this way because we wanted a hedge. These took a massive hit in the Arctic blast last year, right before Christmas, and basically were burned completely. So they almost completely defoliated from that, but man, they have bounced back and done really, really well. So I love that they have grown, they've gotten nice and full. And so for example, so this is where I pruned it in the early spring. So it's probably around April and I pruned it right here. So you can see that, look how much that is a good three feet that it has grown. Um, and so they are nice rapid growers, but you can easily keep them maintained to whatever size you want. The goal is, is that they will form a complete solid hedge back here to kind of give a little bit of privacy to the backyard. And yeah, so everybody's doing great here. They just got fried. Azaleas, these were Encore Azaleas, reblooming Azaleas were in full bloom, just gorgeous, yep. So the flowers are fried, but the foliage is great. It, of course, azaleas are evergreens. Um, so we just burn that and we're moving on, moving on to the next thing for sure. Um, 
your hibiscus, your perennial hibiscus. We haven't really talked about those yet. So this is the lilac crush, and there are actually, there's three of them in here. We might need to take one of them out this season because they are very happy here and very, very um, vigorous. We might need to relocate some people. Um, but your hibiscus, your perennial hibiscus, this is the summerifics. They are perennials. They're a perennial, not a shrub. They're going to die completely down to the ground. Next year, they will sprout growth from the roots. They will not come back from these stems. Depending on where you are in the country, um, it may be better for you to wait until early summer, late, late spring to prune them down to the ground. I have found that for me in North Carolina, a zone 7B, that I can prune these in December. I like for the, my stalks, see how they're still kind of green? My stalks are still green, especially down there towards the base of the plant. Once they turn completely brown, like this up here is completely brown right here, once it turns brown, then I can cut it. But see, I can still, it still bends, it doesn't snap. So there's still um, some water and nutrition and things in the stems of the plant. I like for them to die down completely and then I will come back and clean it up. For me, it's hard to wait that long, but I have found that it does really well for the plant if I can do that. Um, let's go this way and then we'll hit the Dahlia Garden here in just a second. Uh, pentas, yep, toasty, they are gone. Pentas, of course, are great annuals that love the heat and humidity. Beautiful, these were the rose, the hot pink flowers, just gone, right? So we will come in here, clean it up. Uh, I think I might put some ranunculus or some anemones in here for the wedding. We will dress this all up along with, <laughs> with the uh, Blew My Mind XL Avobulus. It did great here, y'all. I loved it right here. You can see how much it has grown. Um, of course, it is an annual, but look, look how much it came over. It came over the sidewalk at least by a foot. And I just love how this filled in. And I planted this very like later on in the season because the spring annuals were done. And so I pulled them out and put this evolulus in here. I never fertilized it. I never did additional water to it. And it is just a very low maintenance, high performing plant that is gorgeous, true blue flowers in it. The patio, everything is doing well. I did come through and watered the violas uh, down here on the base because they are not on irrigation and we are so incredibly dry. So they just got watered this morning. We are still waiting a little bit on the white shishi camellias. They are gonna be slowly, I get a rogue bloom every once in a while. But these white shishi camellias are nice and petite and dwarf. That's where I, why I can have them here in front of the, the porch they will not get massive so they are doing great as are the three different containers that we are doing kind of a little test on the different kinds of soil everybody is doing great right now i cannot say that there is a definite you know somebody is winning and looking better than the other one they all three look great this is a spoma potting soil. Then we had Berger. Berger is a professional mix that we're going to be switching to this coming uh, winter for all of our annuals. So this is a professional mix. And then last but not least over there on the far corner is the Proven Winners potting soil. Everybody's doing great. As is, I think Jerry can, can get you that corner over here of the um, deck boxes that we did not too long ago and the sweet little violas are doing great, the cardoon, and then the euphorbia. Our tulips arrive kind of early in December. I got them from Color Blends and Color Blends is pre-chilling them for me, so that way I don't have to worry about it. And we should have plenty of room to be able to come in here and tuck some tulip bulbs within this box, these boxes right here obviously in other parts of the garden too, but tuck them in here. So how sweet would that be in the spring to have this nice and full and then tulips popping up? It's great. The one downside though about Alyssa's wedding being the end of May, the tulips and daffodils will be done. But that's all right because it's also going into warm stuff so we can have summer annuals in here as well. These two beds, I've got a lot of work to do in. These are, we we'll just call them the backyard beds filled with perennials and shrubs and then we would put annuals kind of on the corner i'm not 
I wasn't as happy with the design this summer. Um, and so I have a feeling that this winter I'm going to be in here moving some stuff around a lot. So this winter and early spring, I am going to be moving um, maybe where plants are spread out. I'll put them together. I don't know. This is just an area that I'm just kind of sitting on. Wasn't super, super happy with the design, not necessarily the plant performance, just the design. And that's whose fault is that? Of course, that's my own, right? That's what we gardeners do. We think we have this great plan and we put it in and maybe it looks great for a while. And then you're like, nah, no, no, I don't like that. Right? So if you're a gardener, you're going to move plants. So this is what we do for sure. Yes. So our, um, before we hit that tree, let's talk about this tree right here. This is the um, Princeton Century. This is a ginkgo. This is a male ginkgo. It is not a female, so it does not drop seeds. It does not stink. Uh, I took a picture of it the, just the other day. The leaves have started to shrivel up a little bit more right now, but just a brilliant yellow. Jerry doesn't know this, but I've already ordered another one to put in the um, signature garden uh, because to put this bright yellow fall foliage is just gorgeous. So if you ever have a chance to put in a ginkgo tree, choose a male one so that way it doesn't drop seeds and it doesn't stink, do it because, oh my gosh, the fall color on that thing is just gorgeous. What Jerry was talking about, of course, here is our um, really fun, funky evergreen tree right here. Jerry, remind me, the name just went out of my head. Hinoki. That's right, thank you. This is the Hinoki Slender. And that's part of my design problem issues here is this Hinoki Slender is really such a fun, funky tree. When I say this is low maintenance, y'all, we literally planted it. And yes, this bed does have irrigation on it, but we've had no bug issues. We've had no death within the plant, no issues whatsoever. We've never had to stake it. It is just a very fun, funky tree. Now it is the slender, but my quote problem with my design is that I've put too many plants up close to it and you can't really see and enjoy this specimen of a plant. Um, and so I want to kind of clean out some things here let this tree shine because it is just such a fun, fun, funky tree. Great evergreen. Obviously, it's very soft because I keep my hands on it. And um, yeah, so that's part of my design quote issue um, within this bed was the things that I wanted to shine were getting a little bit too covered up from some other plants. As we make our way around, coming on over here, if you have... Um, death of the begonias so these were the uh, surefire cherry cordial begonias which were gorgeous and stunning we were just here not too long ago we we're talking about the fall foliage and somebody was like what are those red shrubs well they're not shrubs they were begonias completely melted down and so we'll come in here and clean that up as well for the winter a lot of time i'll just leave this blank i'm not going to put pansies and violas in here. I will just let this rest. We'll come in here and top dress with a great compost and then um, just let it be for sure. Now we were, somebody was just asking me the other day on YouTube, what about the dahlias that I didn't give dahlia updates? And I did, but I didn't give like specific, a whole big like dahlia garden tour um, in the summer when they were in all of their glory. Well, <laughs> This is what the dahlia garden looks like now. This is what a 25 degree night will do to your dahlia garden. Dahlias, they are basically fried down to the ground. Now, some of them still do have some green in here. Um, what I will be doing over the next month, month and a half is coming in and cleaning all of this out. For me, now this is for me in the Piedmont region of North Carolina, a zone 7B. I do not dig up my dahlia tubers. Last year was my first winter with the dahlia tubers. The plan was is that we were gonna like rearrange this and we were gonna dig them up. Well, life happened it and we never moved them. I only lost maybe, maybe five tubers for the, in the winter uh, due to rot, but they did incredibly, incredibly well. So I overwinter my dahlia tubers in the ground. Yes, we have compacted red clay soil, but it is on a slight slope, so water drains, where it's dry as dry can be, so right now I don't have to worry about them rotten. Um, but what I will do is come in here, take the string down, 
cut them straight down to the ground, remove all of my foliage, right? Take that and compost it somewhere else. Just clean it all up, get the weeds out, and then I'm gonna come back through with a really nice compost, whether it's the land and sea or our bulk mix that we use that has some pine, bi pine bark fines in it. And I'm gonna really nice and top dress this. So it'll be nice and pretty. I leave my stakes up because it's just not worth taking the stakes out and then when you put them back in. So if I leave my stakes up year round, I will take down the string, clean it all up, compost it really well. These are on drip. That drip will stay and then come spring as they start to sprout, then I can put my string back up as they grow. Now this year, I have not divided my dahlias at all come in the spring if i need to divide some because they're just so big that would be the time for me to do it if you dig up your dahlias and you're going to um, divide them then they need to stay out of the ground in the fall so either when you dig them up divide them and store them for the winter and then replant them in the spring or if you're like me and you can overwinter in the ground wait until the springtime they start to sprout dig them up divide, replant, or give them away, right? So that's the deal with the dahlias. We had a beautiful, magnificent, gorgeous season with the dahlias. Uh, all of our employees knew that they had an open invitation to come here and cut flowers whenever they wanted to, and it just did my heart so good to see them. They were getting off, and then they would drive up, and then I would see them a couple minutes later walk out, and they had massive vases full of dahlias. So dahlias, Fingers are crossed, we'll start blooming for Alyssa's wedding. So, because they're gonna have, we're gonna have the reception out here, have a nice big tent. Everything's gonna be out here. So, um, we're gonna hope that the dahlias start blooming by the end of May. All right, now what we're gonna do is uh, mosey on up to the front of the house, berm, that kind of area, and show you what's happening up there. All right, so here we are just standing edge of the backyard and hit to the front yard first you remember we were here just was it two weeks ago we talking about how gorgeous this maple was so we filmed that like on a i don't know it was like a tuesday or a wednesday we went to go visit emily for parents weekend at school and we came back on sunday less than a week later this thing had completely defoliated so it dropped its leaves big time um we are under a a lot of, I don't know if we're technically in a drought, but we have not had any rain. So I don't know if that's what made it just drop so fast. I asked Megan, I said, did we get wind? And she was like, no, it just dropped. But not only just that tree, the trees in general were dropping. And then this beautiful thing, this is a redwood. I will try to remember the name and show it to you. We bought this tree when I was pregnant with Jackson. We bought this tree and the forest pansy um, on that same trip from our friend Thomas. And I absolutely love and adore this tree. We planted it here on kind of the front corner of the house because obviously it's gonna get nice and nice and big, but it gives us some shade on our house because this is kind of like the, the west side of the house gets very very hot um, but this tree has done just spectacular it's not the tree itself is not on irrigation per se but the grass is the yard is and it is down here at the bottom so whenever it does rain obviously it gets some good water um, and is very very happy the only problem that i have with this tree is that the japanese beetles do like to munch on it so we try to treat it as best we can to keep them off because it doesn't kill the tree clearly but it does they do chew on the pretty green foliage and it they make it turn brown so it makes it a little unsightly but this thing is just i love this tree it is a beautiful tree um rest in peace to the sweet potato vine <laughs> this was the bewitch green with envy with the <laughs> with the impatience behind it uh yeah melted completely to the ground it is gonna not gonna be fun to clean this up because yeah, I really meant to get that out. yeah. Yeah, no, it didn't happen. Uh, it is going to be smushy and nasty and gross. The plan here is that we will plant violas or pansies here. And then I want to go ahead and put some anemones in this space too for the wedding as they walk by. I know we're going to be kind of cutting it kind of close. We'll see how the weather does. Um, 
but to have a really nice soft soft pastel um, pansies right here and then the viola I mean, the anemones popping up I think it would be gorgeous we'll see you know how things happen around here we're continually moving and grooving and shaking and changing things um, always at the time now the berm we were just up at the berm the other day uh, showing you how to treat your fall perennials and clean them up there you go I mean it's everybody looks pretty good Jerry is going to throw the drone up and later on this afternoon when the sun starts to set a little bit so he will give you a nice up close view of the of the berm but really there's not a whole lot to say right now everybody <laughs> It's kind of the same as everybody before. Uh, and then the last but not least is your lantana. So of course, lantana is a beautiful annual for us here in North Carolina. So this was the lemon zest lush, the, from Proven Winners. And then we had the bewitched green within the sweet potato vine in front of that. It was a gorgeous sight. It no longer is a gorgeous sight. So we will come in here and clean this up depending on where you are depending on your climate depending on your garden depending on the spot in your garden annual lantanas may be a perennial for you we treat these lantanas as perennials and so we switch them out every year do something different with them um, and use them in different locations next year i may not do lantana here i may do something completely different so we do treat these as uh, annuals if you want to try to overwinter your lantana then you're going to want to want to leave it alone the best thing for them is not to cut them because they can have hollow stems and if you get rain a lot of rain in the winter time those stems will fill up with water and they will rot so if you're trying to save your lantana for a perennial just leave it alone in the spring when you start to see new growth come up from the roots then you can cut off all of this year's foliage off of it but that's kind of the trick on the lantana but yes so that is the garden tour here as the yellow jackets are flying around here at creekside nursery really the house this is what we wanted to focus on today and show you what our garden looks like here in early november after a hard freeze the garden cleanup can now commence. I will take you along for the ride on some of this and some others. I will just get in here and just get her done and get everything cleaned up and put to bed for winter. But of course, I will show you exactly how uh, you can prepare your garden for winter as well. We so appreciate you. You have a great day. And as always, thanks so much for joining Creekside. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.